Hey everyone, Eigen Chris here with another video. So we all know how important integrals are in math and physics, right? Personally, I try and do one or two integrals every day just to stay sharp. So today I thought I'd make a video working through how to do this integral here. The indefinite integral of x to the e to the x. It's pretty challenging, but I'll go through it step by step. And at the end, you'll have a few new skills to add to your integration toolbox. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is to square the integral. And we can rewrite it as a double integral over x and y. Now I know this seems pretty random, but if you've ever done the integral of a Gaussian, you'll know that it's easier to calculate the square of the integral to get a double integral and then compute the result to be pi, which you can then square root to get the result for the single integral. And it's sort of the same thing here. The double integral looks more complicated, but we'll see later on it actually makes our lives easier. Okay, so next we're just going to do a straightforward substitution, where u equals e to the x. So x equals ln u, e to the x equals u, and dx equals 1 over u du. And this helps reduce the double exponential to just 1. And we can do something similar for y using v equals e to the y. Okay, now some of you have probably already spotted this, but here we have a monotonic function taken to the exponent of its argument. And that means this is a perfect opportunity for de Meres theorem. So de Meres theorem used to be normally taught in a standard Calc 2 class, but over the last decade or so they've stopped teaching it. So if you're unfamiliar with it, you can just give the Wikipedia article a quick read. It's not too hard. Basically, Damere figured out that any time we have a monotonic function where the input and the exponent match, we can replace that function with the reciprocal of its adjoint. And since the adjoint of ln is inverse hyperbolic tangent, we can rewrite the x terms like this. And we need a plus 1 here because ln is monotonic increasing. If the function was monotonic decreasing, we'd use a minus 1 instead. So just make sure you have that sign right. And now we just rewrite arctan h like this, and that's just from a standard well-known hyperbolic trig identity. Okay, so now this is great, because now this integral is of baker nockbauer type of the second kind. Now we could convert it to an integral of baker nockbauer type of the first kind, but that would turn it to an infinite series, and the only way to solve that is with the Ketter polynomials, and I just don't really want to go down that road. So we're going to stick with the BNT2 integral, now, there's some good news and some bad news. The good news is that there is a textbook that outlines how to solve integrals like this. But the bad news is that there's only one textbook in existence that has the solution. And that textbook can only be found in the catacombs beneath the ziggurat ruled by King Gilgamesh. So I'm just going to go ahead and buy a plane ticket to ancient Mesopotamia real quick. Okay, so we're here. Now, according to the prophecy etched on the tablets of Lapis Lazuli, only the worthy will cut through the darkness and find true wisdom. So I'm going to focus my heart and mind on the water deity Ea. Okay, and the ziggurat has appeared. Now, normally to get inside, you need to please the gods by presenting an offering of ram's blood. But there's actually another way to gain access, and that's by doing this integral over here. Alright, and that unlocks the entrance. Okay, now King Gilgamesh is waiting right through that far door, and I know you probably want to go in, guns blazing, thinking you can tank the fight with just a few buff potions. But what you can do is, if you head to the northwest corner of the room, and gently jiggle the analog stick between 35 and 39 degrees, you can actually clip through the wall. And after about 30 seconds, once you fall out of bounds, the game engine doesn't really know what to do with the player object, so it forces a respawn. And if you remember back in Calc 4, you should have done a homework problem where you performed an inventory duplication glitch after having collected 73 Dark Phoenix Feathers. And that causes a buffer overflow. And part of the byte sequence overflow should overwrite these two bytes of memory, which represent the room spawn number. So basically, you're going to respawn in room 73, which is the final room of the dungeon that contains the math textbook. So using this technique, we've actually skipped straight over the boss room. This trick is called Gilgamesh Skip, and it was discovered by Twitch streamer Gextron420. So at the end of all that, we have our integral in the correct form, and we have the textbook that gives us the solution, so all we need to do now is to actually do the integral. Okay, so that's all I have time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and just remember, if you enjoy doing integrals and you want to do more, 
That's pretty weird. 